All right, so they're still doing this. This is the other part of this. You know, two Muslim women won um, elections as congresswomen. And this is how NBC, from our pals at Newsbusters, this is how NBC and CBS reported their election. Take a look. In Minnesota, 36-year-old Yilhan Omar became the first ever Somali-American elected to Congress. Here in Minnesota, it's a cold state, but the people have warm hearts, and we don't just welcome immigrants, but we send them to Washington. My mom's Born in Somalia, she and her family fled the violence of civil war when she was eight. After years in a refugee camp in Kenya, she immigrated here when she was 12, learning English in three months. That's the America I'm going to go fight for. And mastering politics in the years that followed. This is Casey Hunt on Capitol Hill, where history is about to be made. The newest Congress featuring more than 100 women, a new record. Among them, the first Muslim women, Michigan's Rashida Tlaib and Minnesota's Ilhan Omar. So... This, what this points out is the incredible emptiness of the press's intersectional identity politics. Let's call it identity politics. This identity politics, you know, th this is the thing. They don't even know it's a point of view anymore. Just like Jim Acosta can't tell the difference between his, his opinion and a fact. He can't tell the difference. I mean, they, they can't tell the difference. They don't even know that that reporting was bad reporting because it's, it's historic. It's historic. And of course, it's never historic when the right does it. It's not historic that a Cuban American is a senator in Texas. That's not historic. I think a South Korean, the first South Korean was uh, elected. That's not historic because it's a uh, it's a Republican. Uh, they the fact that they treat Ruth Bader Ginsburg like the first female uh, justice, Supreme Court justice. That, you know, that's another thing. Ruth Bader Ginsburg fell and hurt herself, broke her ribs. Uh, when a woman that old fall, takes a fall, that's a bad thing. That is a bad sign. And I, I wish her well. I hope um, I hope she comes back and heals. If she doesn't, that's going to be the next uh, big story for, for sure. There's going to be a great big fight. But I hope she does heal and she's, she's fine. I, I know when old people fall, that is really, really difficult. But they treat her like she's the first uh, female Supreme Court justice. And of course, she's not Sandra Day O'Connor, but she was a Republican. So it's only historic when the left does it. But of course, the historicity of it, the historicness of it, ignores the fact of who these two women are. These are two virulent anti-Semites. And the first one, Elon Omar, has been very credibly accused of having married her own brother in 2009 as a way of gaming uh, the immigration system is possible immigration fraud, and she may even have c uh, committed student loan fraud as well. She says that she married the guy, but it, the allegation that he is her brother is absurd and offensive, she says. But there is evidence that this is true. I, there, there is a lot of uh, student enrollment records and, uh, and, other, and other evidence supporting the fact that she may, be, uh, may have married her own brother to... Uh, game the immigration system. And, and she also has sent out these tweets about Jews, about the state of Israel, about how uh, Israel, what was, let me see if I can find the tweet. It was how Israel has, um, has blinded uh, people to, you know, the Jews have blinded people to the truth. The other woman, Tlaib, uh, she has embraced a one state solution, which means the Jewish state virtually vanishes. Uh, she's denied the, the Jews their right to a sovereign nation. She's saying separate but equal doesn't work. She's linked to an article on Twitter with the headline, how Israel is inciting Palestinian violence. Ha ha ha. Tweeting uh, support for Razmia Odeh, who faces a life sentence in Israel for murdering two American students in a 1969 supermarket bombing in Jerusalem. This empty racist philosophy of identity politics that does not hold people to account for the things that they do in the same way as Andrew Gillum running in Florida, the, the, who lost in Florida for governor, uh, was able to say, oh, you're just charging me with corruption because um, you're just charging me with corruption because I'm black. Well, you know, he may he's being investigated by the FBI. He, he said in his, uh, his concession speech, I'm not going anywhere. The FBI may disagree. The FBI may come in and pick him up under the arms. and He may be going somewhere in a big hurry and somewhere he doesn't like very much. This intersectional identity politics has just been 
uh, it, it's, it's a racist philosophy and it has emptied the press. It has emptied the press of any mindfulness of what people are and what they believe, which is the only important thing about people, really, especially when they're running for office. The important thing is, what do you believe? What are you going to do? What are you go, who are you going to vote for? That, those are the important things. And they simply do not report on it. Going back to this thing that Knowles and I did at uh, Loyola Marymount last night, where they kept asking, people asked us a number of times, if you, are, if you think that the Democrats are so bad for black people, how come black people keep voting for them? And I said, listen, anybody can be corrupted. Anybody can be bought. You know, I, I mean, anybody can be told they're special. They're, you know, there are, there, are two, there are two races in this country, two races, if I can call them that, two, uh, let's call them ethnic groups, who haven't done as well as other ethnic groups. One of the Native Americans, the Indians, and the other are, are blacks who haven't done as well as they should have. Both of them have been told they're special. Both of them have been told they have to be paid back for the sins that were committed against them historically. Those sins are real. Those sins are real. You'll never hear me say those sins aren't real. But the past is past. And when you go back and try and fix the past, you can only make things worse. Both of them have been isolated in their race by policy. If people would stop isolating them, they would be set free to be Americans just like everybody else, and they would live and rise and fall on their own actions and in their own chances. The fact that this identity, this racist philosophy of identity politics has infested the press, as it has infested the universities, as it has infested uh, Hollywood, is just an indication of people who cannot tell the difference between opinion and fact. They cannot tell the difference between philosophy and fact. They cannot tell the difference, finally, between politics and morality. This is the emptiness. When they say, when they say that the Republicans have failed to communicate with the educated, is because the education system has been corrupted. The entire communication system of this country has been corrupted and needs to change. All right.